In this video, we are doing linear programming in Python. So we use linear programming to solve multiple formulas simultaneously, and it's often used in process design when we're deciding how much to make of particular goods. So we can make multiple different products. How much do we make of each when we're constrained by the equipment that we have or the inventory that's available to us? So to work through this uh, example, go to drstephpowers.github.io slash mgmt dash in dash python. And we're working here under process design where it says linear programming. In our previous video, we looked at linear programming where your solutions are uh, continuous. That is, they can be fractions. And so we looked at a cookie example where you can produce uh, parts of a batch. In this particular video, we are looking at integer programming. And that is where the solutions have to be whole numbers. So now we're going to look at deciding on how much to produce when we are solving for the quantity of each a product. So we can't have half of a product, you can only have whole units. So we click here where it says linear programming. It will take you to the GitHub site where you'll find the worksheet. And at the top of the page here, you can click open in Collab. Collab is a Google product that allows you to code in Python. In order to amend this code yourself, you will need to sign into your Google Drive and save your own copy. It becomes yours, you can do with it what you want. So I'm just gonna switch screens here. In order to do linear programming in Python, you will need to install a package called pulp. The LP at the end is for linear programming. You will also need to import pandas, numpy, matplotlib.pyplot. That was for our previous uh, video where we were graphing. Uh, here we're going to be solving for more variables and so we're not going to graph this time. So you don't need the import matplotlib if you're just doing this integer example. Uh, but if you are graphing like in the previous video, you need that one. So we install it, run this code, we import the packages that we need, pandas and numpy, and then of course we need to uh, import the uh, pulp as well. And that star tells us we're importing all of the package because we have multiple videos here. We are doing continuous integer and uh, binary programming. So I'm just gonna skip past the first part. That was the previous video and the graph, which you need that matplotlib for. But let's do an example where we have more than two variables. So that's why we can no longer graph. Uh, and let's do integer programming. You can do more than two variables for the continuous, uh, the previous video. Uh, just here, I'm just adding complications so you can see all the different ways you can uh, do your linear programming. So these aren't, they don't have to do integer and more than two variables together. Uh, I'm simply adding complications. So we're doing integer and we're doing more than two variables, but you could have two variables and integer, or you could have continuous and more than two variables. So. The process is very similar if you watched the previous video. We need to define the model. We need to define the variables. We need to create the formula for what we're trying to maximize or minimize. And then we need to specify the constraints. So we really need a problem to work from. So let's start here. Your company makes three products, X, Y, and Z. Each unit of X requires 30 minutes of processing time on machine A. 50 minutes of processing time on machine B. Each unit of Y requires 20 minutes on machine A and 35 minutes on machine B. Each unit of Z or Z requires 35 minutes on machine A and 10 minutes on B. At the beginning of the week, you have 20 units of X, 70 units of Y, and 10 units of Z in stock. Available processing time on machine A for the week is 40 hours, machine B has 50 hours, and the demand for X is forecasted to be 50 units, 90 units for Y, and 20 units for Z. Company policy is to maximize the total units on hand, which means we need to consider the amount we already have plus the amount we produce. So we start this by specifying the formulas. So we start by first saying, is this a min or a max problem? Are we trying to minimize costs? Here we're trying to maximize the number of units we have on hand. So we're going to say it's a maximization problem. And then what is the formula? So what does it mean to be a maximum? 
Well, we have 20 units of x plus whatever we make of x plus 70 units of y plus whatever we make of y plus 10 units of z plus whatever we make of z. So if we want to maximize the total units on hand, we have the ones that are already on hand plus whatever we produce. All right. Now we need to start looking at constraints. So let's start with machine A. So machine A is included in the production process for X, Y, and Z. So X requires 30 minutes on A. Plus, we also have to consider that Y uses 20 minutes on A. And when it comes to Z, it spends 30 minutes, 35 minutes on A, okay? And how much A is really available? Well, machine A has available processing time for the week in terms of 40 hours. Notice this is an hours. And our times for each of our products is in minutes, so we need to convert. So we're going to have to multiply it times 60. Okay. All right. What about machine B? Well, machine B, uh, 50 minutes for the first product, so 50x plus, and then for y, it's 35 minutes, okay. And then for z, it is 10 minutes. And machine B, we are limited because machine B has 50 hours of processing time. So that means that whatever we produce can't use more than 50 hours. And of course, we need to convert that into minutes to match the rest of the times that we have here. What other constraints do we have? Well, let's see. We have demand for X is forecasted to be 50 units. So that means X has to be x plus however much we already have on hand so x plus 20 has to be greater than or equal to 50 and for y the demand was 90 so y plus however much we already have on hand which is 70 must be greater than or equal to where we have 90 here and for Z, we need to have at least 20 to meet demand. And we already have, what do we have, 10 on hand? Okay. So notice with these linear programming um, ones, if you're watching both the previous video and this video, that the constraints, some of them are less than equal and some of them are greater than equal. It's the fact that you have constraints that create upper bounds and lower bounds which is why we need to solve the problem. Otherwise, we would have lots of different options uh, if it was all that it just needed to be more than all these things. So it's the fact that we have constraints that are limiting us from being too high a quantity and from too low a quantity that's squeezing us in between. And because we have to simultaneously solve all these different formulas, that's why we're using linear programming. All right, so do we have all our formulas? Let's take this and let's put this into Python. All right, so first we define the model and this only works, of course, if you've already uh, installed your packages. So you got to make sure you already have that pulp package running. OK, so we have our model and pulp uses the terms LP problem, LP variable. So we write LP problem and we name this problem. So we'll just name it production. You can call it whatever you want. And then you have to specify, is it a minimization problem or a maximization problem? Here we're trying to maximize the quantity of product that we have. So we have LP maximize. And we run that. Then we have three variables, X, Y, and Z. We'll call them product X, product Y, product Z. And what you see here is we are calling the command LP variable. The first part is the name. The second part is the minimum value, in which case we need X, Y, and Z. Uh, the minimum is zero, we can't have negative units. And then do we have a maximum, an upper bound? 
Well, we have no limitation here. X can be a large number, Y can be a large number, Z can be a large number, as long as it's within our constraints. So we write none here uh, because as long as it's a positive number, we're good. Then the last part here is what's different from the previous video. So instead of LP continuous, where you could have fractions, we have LP integer. Because when we make product X, we can't have half of an X, only whole units of X. Same thing with Y and Z. Okay, so let's import our variables in. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is define the model based on the maximization problem. So you'll recall that we are trying to maximize the total number of units. We already have 20 of X and 70 of Y and 10 of Z plus whatever we make. So we'll take that formula there and we'll put it in. X plus 20, Y plus 70, Z plus 10. Okay. Then we need our constraints. So we're entering the rest of our formulas. In all of these, because we're considering all of this, we have that model plus equals means that it need, our model needs to take into consideration all of these formulas, okay? So we have our machine A time, which was the 30X plus 20Y plus 35Z, must be less than or equal to 2400. So recall, right, we have 30X plus 20Y plus 35Z, less than or equal to 40 hours times 60 minutes in an hour. 40 times 60 is that 2400. And then for machine B, 50X plus 35Y plus 10Z is less than or equal 50 times 60, which is 3,000. So that's what you're seeing right here. And we can label these constraints, machine A time, machine B time. Okay. Then we have our constraints based on our forecasted demand. We had to have more than 50 of X. So that was the 20 on hand plus whatever we make. We had to have more than 90 of Y, we already have 70. And we need to have 20 of Z, we already have 10. So we load those models in, type in the formula, give them names, run it, okay? And then the last part here, you don't have to change this set of code. What it's saying is solve the model and output print the variable name and the variable's value. If you go to run this and it gives you an error, then likely you have an issue with your constraints. There are too many constraints that limit you and can't find a choice. The other thing is if you find your solution has negative numbers, when you specified it had to be zero or higher, this also indicates that it can't find a solution. And so in that case, you may have too many constraints that means there's no real solution to the problem because there's no place where it's less than these formulas, more than these formulas, and they conflict with each other. So double check your solutions before you go anywhere with them. Uh, in case they are negative or in case it doesn't produce any, those indicate to you that maybe there's a problem with your formulas or maybe you have too many constraints, okay? Too many limitations. So we run the model here and it says we should make 30 of X, 36 of Y and 22 of Z. This will give us enough plus the stuff we already have on hand to meet customer demand. It'll be within the machine time that we have and it will maximize the total quantity that we're able to produce. In our previous video, we showed that on a graph to kind of show how you're constrained by your different formulas. You can't show it here because we have three variables instead of two. If you were running your integer programming uh, with just two variables, you could show a graph just like this one here. Uh, to do that graph, go back to the uh, previous video, the linear programming video on how to create this or just simply look up at this code. And this piece here is going to be those constraint formulas. Okay, so if you're doing that, we can't do it in this case because we have three variables. So you can use linear programming when you have multiple variables, when you have lots of constraints, when you have lots of variables, when you have integer, so it has to be a whole number, or as we saw in the previous video, where it can be fractions. Again, if you're getting wonky things, 
particularly when it pops out negative, it means that either your formulas are wrong or you have too many constraints and then you need to, if this is your business, uh, you might have to let them go. Either you need to find more time for your machines to run, you can't meet demand um, for if that's what your constraints are. There's some constraints that you're going to have to let go.